Now let us take one more step into the details of everything. You already know what existence is if you have seen the first part of this series. But uh, let us go deeper into the existence. Let us study it in depth. Anyhow, it's a very big thing. So we will be able to just cover the basics. And we can use our seven interrogatives. Plus, I added two more points in the study, which are the truth and falsity of it. And commonly held blind beliefs regarding that subject. So the existence is defined as all that is, everything. That is the answer to the question, what is existence? It is all that is perceived, all that is unperceived. Everything that existed in the past is there in present and will be there in future. It has this universe and all possible universes in it. It has everything that is physical and everything that is non-physical. Mental, non-mental, metaphysical. You can call the stuff by any name and it will be in the existence. It will constitute the existence. Plus, there are strange things like the false things, imaginations and everything that is still not imagined. Here, there is everything that is true and there is everything that is false. There are illusions and there are real things. There is all the experience that is possible. And there is the experiencer also. Let us not forget the experiencer. It's very, very important. So you can see that it is infinite. It is beyond comprehension. This limited human being can know a tiny part of it. And with his limited intelligence, can find out a few things about it. So the most important thing to know about the existence is that it is there. There is no non-existence. Nobody has seen non-existence. Now the next question is, why is there an existence? What is the purpose behind it? What is the reason behind it? And what is the cause behind it? We have never seen any cause. We have never seen any reason or purpose. That is not our direct experience. And we can utilize logic also to find out if there is a cause of the existence. So let us assume a cause. And the effect of it is the existence. There is an event or thing which is the cause and there is another event or thing which is the existence itself, the whole of it. Now, if there is a cause, it means it exists already before your this existence which appeared later. That which existed earlier is also existence by our definition because it is defined as everything. So the cause is included in it. There cannot be any cause which is outside of existence. As soon as you imagine the cause being outside of the existence, it makes no sense. It is absurd. Because there will be now two existences, one in which this cause exists and the other which is the effect. Similarly, there is no effect of this existence. It is not producing any more than this existence. So it is there without any reason. The objects have reasons. The events have reasons, but the all that is contains all the reasons. There are no reasons beyond it and it has no purpose also. It is not directed towards anything because all purposes are within it. Or you can say it has all the reasons and it has all the purposes. Infinite number of purposes exists here. Some people may like to say that it is self-caused. But that is not a very accurate statement because uh, nothing causes itself. That is not logical. If you see a cause, it will lie within the existence. If somebody claims that I have seen a cause that is beyond existence, it will be very difficult to establish it. It will remain a fantasy forever. How was this existence created? What went into this? What processes gave rise to the whole of the existence? And we do not find a process that is operating outside of the existence. For similar reasons that we used for the cause, if there is a process outside of everything, then it is a part of everything already. The outside and inside is, will be arbitrary, irrational boundary. If you can see a process, it is already in the existence. Or you can say all the processes in the existence, in finite varieties of it, give rise to existence. There is not one process or there are not 20 or 30 processes. Infinite number of them 
they lie within the existence our direct experience says that we do not see any process that forms the existence we see processes that are already formed that are already happening all these processes are part of the existence now let us take the when question when did it all start and when is it going to end so our direct experience says that i don't know it was it was since the beginning nobody knows and we don't know for how long the existence will remain and whether there is even a possibility for non existence to, to be there and how are we going to establish it if it appeared at some point in time and it will disappear at some point in time is it even possible and if we say that the existence is happening in time that means there is a clock ticking outside the existence and there is a observer outside the existence checking the clock which is absurd because existence is defined as it includes everything so probably a part of the existence can come into being at some point in time but not all of it some tiny event can happen within time but there is no time outside of existence so we say it is timeless what is our direct experience we see it is pure presence it is just present there is no past and there is no future in it the past is just our memory and the future is just our projection of the memory they both lie in present all the memory and its processes they happen in present that is all we see we never even see the time we do not have a direct experience of the time it is a concept it is an idea it appears as an idea in the existence through the agency of the human beings we never see existence appearing in time what does the logic say let us assume first that there is a time which is beyond existence the time is more fundamental than existence let us imagine for a while and we also need a clock and we also need an observer to find out whether something popped out of nothing and if it did we can be certain that yes the existence popped out of nothing at this point and it was measured by somebody who is a reliable person we can trust him but if there is a clock if there is time is there if there is observer already that means something exists already and if you say no these things did not exist then then the popping out of the existence out of nothingness is only a fantasy it is just a blind belief then similarly if the existence is going to disappear somebody needs to check it somebody needs to witness it otherwise we will never know similar logic applies that if the time continues when the existence has disappeared and if there is a clock and somebody is sitting there with the clock then the existence never disappeared some event happened which disappeared not the existence and if we say that no everything disappeared that means it will be fantasy we cannot establish it we cannot prove it logically and we never observe it experimentally so we say it is infinite in extent it is eternal all the time appears in existence we never see an existence thing called existence appearing in time now where is this existence what is location in which direction do i need to go to find the existence and you will very quickly find that these questions are absurd there are places in existence there is no doubt about it all the places space appears in existence so i need to choose my words carefully they appear they are not there really and the whole of it is non local existence does not exist in a place places exist in the existence this is our direct experience this is what we see if we assume that the whole of it whatever was mentioned under the what question is happening in a place is happening in a space of some kind you can assume imagine any weird kind of space you want any weird kind of place and there you see this whole thing now that place is already there there is an observer there and the place is connected to this existence otherwise you won't be able to observe it which means there is a bigger existence outside of this existence existence and whatever you think is existence is a small part of it it is not the existence by definition it is not all that is because all that is is around you where this tiny event is happening you assume it is the whole of the existence so logically it is impossible to find a place where all of it is there and the places as we have seen in uh, the series on uh, 
illusions, which I call less transmissions. There is a video on the illusion of the time and space and many more things. Using that kind of study, we can conclude that places happen in existence. Even they are not there. They are also imaginary. And the whole of it, including the illusion of places and spaces, is non-local. The concept of locality, directions, places does not apply to the existence. And that is probably most correct uh, statement. You can use the same statement for everything. For example, the concept of time does not apply to existence. The concept of processes and causes does not apply to the whole existence. These things, they apply to the things that appear here, the events that happen here, the dependent existent stuff. Again, we can ask. There is no harm in studying. There is no harm in asking questions. We can ask, who is the existence? It looks already very, very strange. So probably it is some kind of entity. Look, it is producing so many wonderful things. So it has to be something intelligent. Look, there is an observer here. There is experiencer here. So very, very obviously the question of who comes, who is this? And we never see anything like this. There is no person here. It is totally impersonal. A person is an appearance in the existence. There are many. The existence itself is not a person. It is childish to project the qualities of a person on the whole. We can ask how many of existences are there. Nobody has seen more than one. And by definition, it is not possible to have more than one because it says everything. So if there are two, it also gets included in one. What is happening here is that this one is appearing as many. The one has taken many, many forms. And this question arises that this one is probably many because I see many forms, probably the, the whole of it is repeating many times. So we can use the logic here. If it repeats many times, if there are many of these existences, then by definition, they all, they represent one existence, one big existence as a whole combined together. And now these many, they reduce to events and objects in the existence. So it is logically impossible to find more than one existence. This is very important actually. This is very important because we have seen that existence is merely experiencing. Experiencing is the experiencer and the experience combined. And since there is only one of it, that means there is only one experiencer and there is only one experience. This will be important point to note. But we are going to go into the details of experience and the experiencer also. So there I will go into the details of this one and many again. Is the existence true or is the existence false? Now recall our criteria for truth. All that changes is false. All that is unchanging, immutable is truth. And in existence, we find both kind of things. Things that changes, which we call as, called as the experience and the, and the thing that does not change, which we called as the experiencer. They are both existence. So regarding truth, Existence is both true and false. And similarly, you can say it is not true and it is not false. Just to emphasize that the true and false do not apply to the whole, do not apply to the one. They apply to the dualistic objective reality, the relative reality, which is in which some things are true, some things are not true. Even the false exists in the existence. So for example, take a movie. Now it is totally made up. It is false. But it does exist as a movie. Yes, whatever was shown in the movie that was that probably never happened or it happened as acting or special effects. Similarly, your dreams, imaginations, they exist not, not as actual events and actual people and places, but as dream itself, the event of dream, it exists. You label it as false or whatever you want to label it, but the existence contains it. Similarly, the true things, whatever you want to label true, are in the existence. So either it is both or it is neither. Or you can simply more accurately say that these, uh, the dual concepts, they do not apply to the existence. It is one. It is not two. Nothing is dual in the existence. It is all taken together. So let us examine a few blind beliefs. I'm pretty sure there are hundreds of them, but... Let us, let us take a few things. 
So some people believe that the existence was created. There was nothingness and things came into existence including humans and whatever. And it is there is a chance that because it was created it will be destroyed because this is the general rule whatever gets created gets destroyed. Let us examine this word creation. How do we define the word creation? We can take some examples like the tree is created out of the seed and the air and water and sunlight. The water vapor is created out of the water by boiling it. A pot is created out of clay by shaping the clay. And the ornament is created out of gold by shaping the gold. A painting is created out of paint and canvas. In all these examples you will see that there is something which gets transformed into another object, another event, another thing. Can we find an example where something appeared out of nothing? And our direct observation that it experience says that no, I never found it. You can say there are tiny things that pop out of nothing but they are popping out of the energy. Now let's not go into that but there is something out of which the particles, the fundamental particles and light and all those things, gravity, forces that pop out of it. They do not come out of nothing. And there is a very intelligent saying that nothing comes out of nothing. So in that case, if the existence came out of something, it was created out of something, assembled out of something, then that thing was already there. Then that substance was already there and it was existence. The substance merely changed. The word substance is very interesting. There is the stands here which means to stand and there is sub there which means below, that which stands below. And existence means that which stands apart. So what is it that stands below the existence? Not nothingness. We are pretty sure of that. And we see that there we do not find any processes. So only existence can stand below the existence, nothing else. The existence is substance. There is nothing more fundamental than existence itself. If you find there is something more fundamental, then it is the existence. It is. It becomes the part of the existence out of which this these other tiny things, ephemeral events are popping out and getting destroyed. The word creation also implies a creator. If there is a creator, then the existence is already there in the form of the creator. You can assume any strange kind of creator, formless with form, in a human form, in animal form, exotic forms, form of the energy and all. It is already there. So who created that? That question can go to the infinity. So we can simply say that the concept of creation does not apply to that which is. Things get created in the existence. The existence does not get created. Some people may say it was self-created. <laughs> or some people may say the creator was self-created. Well, if something can, can create itself, then the existence also can create itself. Even your dinner can create itself. But we never see it. That is a fantasy. There can be psychological, sociological reasons for these beliefs, but they do not stand rational scrutiny. Some people believe that it is going to be destroyed. One day there will be non-existence, which means nothingness. And that is also false. There is also a belief. Nobody has seen non-existence. Nobody has seen existence getting destroyed. Because the worlds get destroyed. Things get destroyed. People die. Creatures die. And then we project this kind of death destruction on the whole. Which is a fantasy. Which is imagination. You can observe what happens when something is destroyed. A complex structure is reduced to a simple structure. That's all. If your house is destroyed, it will be reduced to dirt. If a person dies, the body is reduced to fertilizer, smoke and ash. So actually nothing, there is nothing here which simply disappears. It simply changes form. So if the existence which you think is a well-formed thing, that is why you can imagine a destruction. If it is destroyed, it will simply get converted into something simpler. It will remain in another form. And you can see in front of you that these processes of creation and destructions are happening every second in front of you. The change or the impermanence is all there is in the existence which is being observed by this unchanging permanent observer and the creation and destruction is happening at the same time. It is our bias. If a structure is formed out of raw material, an arranged pile of things, we call it creation. 
or more accurately when the high entropy arrangements are converted into low entropy arrangements we call it creation and the reverse we call it destruction it is our bias all there is in existence is impermanence if the impermanence permanence creates a structure we call it creation if the impermanence disassembles it we call it destruction it is a human point of view and we cannot project this thing on the whole that is very childish in the existence itself is not existence we explained in the previous episodes that the essence of the existence is emptiness it is a special kind of emptiness which is full of potential and all there is potential only all there is is probabilities nothing else so it is already non existent in one way but since it is not nothing we are more comfortable calling it existence or you can choose any other word if you think the existence is not the good word choose the primordial stuff or waters of something something who cares there is something and it has these these properties that's all we will ever know now some people may believe this that there are more existences there is another dimension where there are more things well then it is the existence itself appearing in some other dimension whatever that means <laughs> people say that there is existence after death there is a separate existence well then these this existence and that existence combined together is more fundamental existence these two are just parts of it and so on just like we saw the answer to how many question there is only one what you think is more existences or forms of existences is your imagination because the mind does not go there the mind cannot grasp the whole of it it tries to imagine smaller things tries to slap the label of existence on it the existence is one not a person is non local timeless infinite is uncaused it is beyond comprehension it is beyond our intellect and it is the experience it is the truth and it is the false and it is experiencing itself as this experiencer i don't know if anything is more enigmatic than this there is nothing more mysterious than this 